So this is the NV1. Uh, the NV1 is a showcase piece for the technology that we're bringing to market in the marine industry. So we are going to be doing our uh, North American launch of this vehicle at the Toronto Boat Show in January. And we're really showcasing a lot of new technology here. This is a very unique experience of a hydrofoiling electric boat. And a couple of the main features there, um, it's pure electric, so we have zero emissions uh, and zero pollution into the water. And the other big factor uh, that's unique in this is it's, it's a hydrofoiling boat, which means it has a wing underneath that lifts the hull out of the water and it actually flies over the water and flies over the waves. It's a very unique experience that we're bringing uh, and we're really looking forward to the feedback uh, as we bring this to market at the Toronto Boat Show and uh, to, the, uh, to the rest of the Canadian market over the course of next summer. A couple of big features, as we've seen in the automotive industry, uh, uh, electric cars have a huge amount of torque, they're really low maintenance, uh, and they're really cost effective in the long run because we're not paying for gas. We see the same thing in boating world, uh, but there haven't been any good solutions uh, to electric which provide both range and speed uh, in a high performance boat. So what our hydrofoiling platform does is it gives us the efficiency that we get really long range and we can get really high speed and we combine that with an experience of flying over the surface of the water. So rather than crashing through waves, uh, we're having an experience that feels more like flying an airplane uh, over the surface of the water. On, uh, on pricing, this is, a, this is the first prototype. Uh, it's a unique product. Uh, and the first out are going to be in the ballpark of about $400,000 US. Uh, our long-term strategy is really to bring this to a broader market, um, start bringing that price point down uh, for the broader units. Um, but the first units are, uh, are very special and kind of unique one-off systems. So we're looking for our first customers uh, in really the, the Muskoka region or in Canada, uh, and then we'll be bringing that more broadly um, to the North American market and also to Europe. So we'll be, uh, we'll be stopping in Amsterdam uh, in, the, in the coming months and, uh, and then really taking this around the world uh, to Abu Dhabi, the Middle East, uh, and a longer term strategy that's, that's very global. My background is, uh, is a University of Waterloo engineer. We're a very Canadian team with a huge depth of experience uh, from the technology side. We have roboticists, uh, we have autonomy experts, uh, product development, engineering uh, experience from Waterloo that really got developed in our previous company where we were building drones in Arion Labs. 
So we, uh, we launched that company back in 2007 and we really developed a huge amount of expertise in flight control systems. And that's been a key piece of what we're building here is that ability to fly over the water. And all of the experience that we did in drones translates directly into the marine space where we're building boats that fly. The other big piece that we developed is really around autonomy systems, uh, making systems which are really smart and the intelligence that we see, say in your car, where you've got cameras all the way around it, backup warning sensors, uh, lane keeping systems, we're bringing that to the marine space as well. And all of that experience is coming again from that pedigree in the, in the drone space of building camera-based autonomy and navigation systems. So this is gonna be an extremely smart, intelligent boat with those warning systems uh, and autonomy and safety systems um, that we really haven't seen in the marine industry to date. The technology really applies to all of those dimensions. We're starting with the recreational user for those uh, for those first buyers, and the goal here is to really build a high performance, unique experience uh, on the water of that smooth flight and zero emissions. Longer term, there's a huge opportunity in the commercial space where we can take that uh, the value of electric propulsion uh, saves huge operational costs and maintenance costs uh, for regular use on uh, water taxis and ferries. So longer term, uh, we've got huge uh, application in both the recreational and commercial spaces.
police, public safety, uh, and a lot of focus now on dual use applications. So getting into the postcard applications uh, and defense, we'll uh, also be looking to leverage the clean tech. Um, other benefit here is it's very quiet. Uh, you can have a conversation on the back of this boat as it's flying across the lake at 50 miles an hour. Uh, and really that stealth capability has both benefits for the, uh, for the recreational user, having a quiet conversation, um, and obviously also on surveillance and security. Stiff. I'm, I'm all right now. Well, hopefully that's the end of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to worry yeah, about like the whole nothing, season. Nothing serious. It was just kind of, oh, I'm more tired than I thought it would be. It just kind of, no energy, but getting there. So has this been good for you today? Uh, today, yeah, yeah, it has been good. Yeah, we've got some good media. Uh, I can't even keep track of this all here, obviously. Uh, Airwolf stock is used to swimming for the press. I think I'm here at CBC. It's CHCH. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Uh, From the uh, two. I think some yeah. Hamilton's coming today. Um, yeah, I guess they were going from Hamilton. Uh, they might have other, yeah. You weren't at the, uh, you weren't at Flips last week, were you? No. I was just saying to Steve, so I, I go to either uh, Flips or Miami. And Miami has more kind of general yeah. electrical stuff. Yeah. Flips is still 94% yeah. of yeah. it yeah. is either those or like some of the motors in there. Yeah, or right. Or I saw the silent yachts boat last week. It's oh, a, yeah, I was on that in the Yeah, I talked to the, the, the Steve Bell was the guy. Steve's a good guy. Yeah. He does seem like a good guy. Yeah, yeah, he's really good guy. So he was like, yeah, let's chat about uh, 15 foot tenders and that kind of stuff. Because uh, I was thinking okay. we could probably do something. Oh, good. But, um, he's I mean, a, uh, it's just conversation. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's one of the number of government for a few guys. Because uh, when I was a kid and, like, he couldn't see me. Yeah. Garden and yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. So couldn't do it, and then eventually he said, "Okay, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do it tomorrow." Yeah. So what, what speed is it below that? Uh, or twenty or twenty knots? Twenty knots. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think the kid Bella goes up at fourteen. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, we could, it's sort of like a sliding scale. We could actually make it lower. Then you don't get the top speed as high. Oh, is that what happens? Oh, okay. We, we go up at about 17, 17 or 18. Oh, okay, yeah, because Candela goes up lower, but knots. also yeah. lower top speed. Yeah, yeah okay. you don't want to go more than 25. So the, uh, the system itself is extremely easy to use, like a conventional boat, and it's actually a little bit easier. Uh, the, the interface for the pilot is a steering wheel and a throttle, like they're used to on a regular boat. And because it is, has so much intelligence, uh, it controls uh, the maximum speed that is going and the maximum banking angle and the steering rate uh, to make that whole, uh, that whole system extremely safe. The network of cameras around the, around the system can detect where the dock is, if there's swimmers behind you, in front of you, uh, and all of that is, is a real aid for the, uh, for the operator to make it easier to use in a conventional boat.